Hey everyone, I'm Harvest Build Destroy, and in this video I want to talk about something I touched on in my video on Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. Interface improvements in RTS games, as well as AI which I think is strongly related. I'm mostly going to focus on AoE 2, but the principles should apply to any game. DE included a number of quality of life improvements, some of which I was admittedly somewhat skeptical of at first, but which I've come to embrace, despite the fact that they technically make the game easier. But as far as I'm concerned, not every interface improvement is going to be a good thing. There's a fine line between making a game less obtuse and taking away player agency in a way that waters it down. It's not easy to pinpoint exactly where the line is, but in this video, I'm going to try to at least get close. The major question is, what should the game do for you, versus what should you have to decide for yourself? As you'll see when we get into it, the answers to these questions aren't always obvious and are difficult to quantify. I suppose I can't make a video on a topic like this right now without talking about the new auto scout feature in DE, but I'm actually going to leave that until later in the video. I think the best place to start is to look at the different ways that Age of Empires 2 and Starcraft Brood War are mechanically difficult games, which I think is ultimately an interface thing. It should be pretty clear by now that I want RTS games to be difficult, especially when it comes to macro. What I find so satisfying about the pursuit of playing RTS games, or at least these two particular ones, is the fact that they are literally impossible to play perfectly, particularly on the macro side of things. There are more tasks you have to perform in these games than you have time to execute, so you have to decide what to spend your limited attention on. To me, they're more like learning a musical instrument or language than they are like playing a more standard video game. But there are different ways RTS games can be hard, even if we look purely at the macro side of things. For instance, I could just as easily have lumped StarCraft II in with these games, since I think it too is a game with an essentially infinite skill ceiling. But I didn't, because I think its difficulty comes from a fundamentally different place. In the other two games, simply expanding your economy and continuing to produce units takes up most of your attention, while StarCraft II's difficulty has a lot more to do with unit positioning, moment-to-moment -moment map awareness, how you engage, making effective use of active abilities, unit composition, and things like that. But even though macroing perfectly in both AoE 2 and Brood War is essentially impossible, this is true for different reasons in each case. I really don't want this to become a my game can beat up your game kind of thing, but the difference in where the difficulty comes from in the two games is a not insignificant part of the reason why Age of Empires has always appealed more to me. To put it bluntly, while I want RTS games to be hard, particularly with macro, I don't think the primary source of difficulty should be wrestling with the game's interface. I think there's a fundamental difference between a game being difficult because you have to make a large number of meaningful decisions in a short period of time, and execution being difficult because of arbitrary interface restrictions. This has always been a bit of a sticking point for me with Brood War, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Yes, it's an impossibly difficult macro game that sustained an incredibly vibrant meta over more than two decades, but its difficulty stems not so much from the decisions you make themselves as how difficult they are to execute, and this difficulty mostly hinges on arbitrary restrictions to its interface. I talked about this in one of my earliest videos, The Future of RTS, admittedly in a somewhat heavy-handed way, but I think it bears repeating and refining here. I've always felt that if large-scale, difficult-to-manage RTS economies are what we're after, AoE-style 3 or 4 resource games are really the only way forward for brand new games in an era where arbitrary interface restrictions don't really fly anymore. Sure, Brood War's economy is hard to manage, but that's mostly because of the 12-unit selection cap, lack of auto-mine, and multiple building select. If you're unaware, Multiple Building Select, or MBS, is the ability to select more than one building at once, which Brood War doesn't have, and Automine is the ability to set a building's rally point to a resource and have new workers that come out of that building automatically mine when they're created, which Brood War also doesn't have. If we consider the difference between saturating mineral patches off of multiple bases in Brood War versus StarCraft II, the significance of these interface restrictions becomes immediately clear. If you have, for instance, three bases in Brood War, it actually takes quite a bit of player attention to continually saturate them. There are a few ways to do this, but let's say you're using the F key camera hotkeys. You have to press F2, click the command center, hit the SCP hotkey, then rinse repeat for the other two bases for a total of 3 times 3 equals 9 actions. The moment they come out, you have to press the F key again, select the SCV and right click a mineral patch for another 3 times 3 equals 9 actions, or 18 in total. You also have to move your screen at two specifically timed moments, which is a significant investment of your limited attention. It's still significant even if you leave your new SCVs idle for a bit and do both sets of commands at the same time, only moving your screen once per cycle. It still ends up being 15 total actions. F key, click the command center, hit the SCV hotkey, select the new SCV and right click a mineral patch for 5 actions times 3 bases equals 15 actions total. To continue making SCVs efficiently, you have to do this at regular intervals, and as I said, you have to move your screen to do so. That's quite a bit of player attention. In StarCraft II, which has a more modern interface, including MBS and Automine, you just hit your hotkey for your command centers, which should already have the rally point set to minerals, and hit the SCV hotkey three times. For most players, this is 5SSS, or something comparable, and it takes half a second and doesn't involve moving your screen. 
Another example would be resetting your rally points when you have a large number of production buildings. In Brood War, you have to set a camera hotkey to your production area and another to your desired rally location, and then jump your screen back and forth, clicking on each building in turn and then right-clicking the new rally location. After setting the camera hotkeys, this is four actions times however many production buildings you're re-rallying, and you have to move your screen twice per building. This is a pretty intricate bit of muscle memory to develop for something that's incredibly simple in any other more recent game. In other games, you just press the key for your production structure control group and right click. I have a lot of respect for players who get good at not only executing the Brood War method, but also deciding when it's worth dedicating time to this instead of other tasks, but I think it's reasonable to ask whether or not these sorts of things are the way a game should be difficult. I want to be clear here that I am in no way, shape, or form suggesting that Brood War's interface should be quote unquote modernized. It definitely shouldn't be. I think it's awesome that there's a relic of the past like this with a high quality remaster and large competitive scene that you can still play in 2020. I just don't think that this approach to RTS difficulty is the way forward with possible future games. Anyway, because of the effects of interface improvements like these on StarCraft's difficulty, it was necessary for Blizzard to change a number of other things in StarCraft 2 in order to retain a similar level of difficulty. Examples of these include making units much more mobile, increasing the game speed, adding tons of active abilities, and macro mechanics like Larva Inject and Chrono Boost. While the ways Blizzard chose to compensate for this dip in difficulty are quite ingenious, the end result is a pretty dramatic shift in StarCraft 2's overall game dynamic. There's less emphasis on pure macro and base management in general, and more emphasis on unit composition and how you engage your opponent and make use of active abilities. This is, of course, a totally legitimate way to have things work, and I'm not surprised that StarCraft II is as popular as it is. I think it's an excellent game, but it's not my game. The overall dynamic of it being impossible to macro perfectly is what I like most in RTS games, but it seems to me that the StarCraft Minerals and Gas 2 resource formula relies on interface restrictions for this dynamic to emerge. If StarCraft II is anything to go by, most of what made Brood War such a special game would have been lost if Blizzard had quote-unquote updated its interface in StarCraft Remastered. But I don't think Age of Empires II has the same problem. At all. And this is why I'm okay with DE's quality of life improvements, at least so far. Most of the game's difficulty doesn't stem from arbitrary interface restrictions. The game itself is just plain difficult. I think it's tough to talk about the effects of interface improvements on RTS without talking about the complexity of the game in question itself. If a game's economy is simple enough and it has a modern interface, the only way to ensure that it has an infinite skill ceiling is to place emphasis in other areas like StarCraft II does, which fundamentally shifts the overall game dynamic. Again, that's a totally legitimate way to do things, but not really what I'm looking for in an RTS personally. This is essentially why I'm such a stickler for the number of resources in RTS games. With a modern interface, the overall dynamic I'm looking for probably isn't even possible without at least three. When you're saturating bases in Brood War, it might take a lot of actions and attention to do, but you're not really making a meaningful strategic decision aside from whether or not to do it, which isn't the same as deciding between different possibilities. You only have to take your gas geyser once per base, and it only takes three workers, so when you're making workers in StarCraft, they're generally going to minerals. Sure, AoE2 has MBS and Auto Mine, but there are four rather than two resources that you need to balance based on what you want to do, and gathering food involves manually tasking villagers to construct farms, spending wood to do so, which makes the entire process of properly balancing your economy a hell of a lot messier. Deciding where to send your new villagers or how to retask villagers already working based on what you're trying to do are meaningful strategic decisions that almost no amount of interface streamlining will trivialize in the way that MBS and Auto Mine do to expanding your economy in StarCraft II. This is much more the way I want RTS games to be difficult. If you aren't deliberate about where your town center rally points are in AoE 2, you'll end up with a poorly balanced economy even if you're consistently producing villagers. It's not just a matter of total resources collected, but what you have the ability to turn those resources into. Even if the mechanical actions required to continue villager and military unit production aren't as overwhelming as they were in the past, a more meticulous player still has ample opportunity to put himself in an advantageous position. The point is, the more user-friendly RTS interfaces become, the more clear it will be that games with somewhat more complex economies like Age of Empires have a much higher potential for macro difficulty. However, I should note that I do think there is, at least in theory, a line somewhere where a game's economy would be too complex and would interfere with your ability to make meaningful strategic decisions between a limited number of options. I don't know exactly where that line would be, but Age of Empires 2 certainly doesn't cross it. Perhaps I'll explore this idea in a future video. Anyway, I used the word arbitrary before to describe Brood War's interface limitations, and I think they are ultimately just that. The 12-unit selection cap, lack of MBS and auto mine, are to me like insisting on using a hammer when you have a nail gun. 
That's not to say that they don't create a style of macro that is interesting in its own right, but I think you'd be hard pressed to put restrictions like this into a new game and have players accept them. I would consider eliminating these types of interface restrictions to fall entirely in the making the game less obtuse category as opposed to the watering it down by removing player agency category. To my mind, at least so far, essentially all of AoE 2 DE's interface improvements fall into the former category, particularly things like updating the functioning of waypoints and being able to queue up both units and upgrades at the same building. I think we could have said the same thing about multi-queue prior to HD edition. If you don't know what I mean by this, the original version of AoE 2 did let you select more than one building, but you could only queue up units from the first one that was selected. Multiple rally points, on the other hand, could be reset for all selected buildings with a single right click. However, it's been over a decade since I played the old school CD version of AoE 2, and I don't even have a CD drive to check anymore, so my apologies if that's incorrect, but that's at least how I recall it being. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if I have this wrong. Anyway, what AoE players call multi-queue is the ability to queue up units at multiple buildings at once in the same control group, which AoE didn't always have. When it was first implemented, some players had reservations about it trivializing the game's macro, and fair enough. I think that was a legitimate concern to have, but at the end of the day, I think AoE 2 is a complex enough game that it can withstand these types of interface updates without trivializing its mechanical difficulty much. This is one of the main reasons I think it will continue to be my favorite RTS game in the foreseeable future, and perhaps always. However, I do think there's a crucial line that interface improvements could cross that would trivialize even AoE 2, although arguably it might be less of an interface thing and more of an AI thing. Let's look at a fairly extreme example. Imagine if developers were to take it so far that the AI would decide what resource you needed most and retask your villagers for you based on what you were trying to do. A portion of the single player audience might actually like this, but at that point, why would you even bother playing an RTS game as opposed to an RTT like Total War? Combine this with the Age of Mythology auto queue, and you might as well rename the game Empire Sim and be done with it. If this seems like a good idea to you, well, fair enough, I guess, but my channel definitely isn't for you. But while a change like this certainly would fall into the category of watering the game down by taking away player agency, it is worth pointing out that the line really is fuzzy if we look at less extreme cases. For instance, when a tree or a gold pile runs out and villagers who are gathering from it automatically task themselves to another one nearby, that is technically an instance of the AI making a strategically important decision for you, but even a purist like me isn't going to object to the game doing that. The same could be said about military unit AI. Once a unit you've manually targeted dies, your units will automatically acquire new targets based on which attack stance you're using. The decision of which unit to target is likewise a meaningful strategic decision. The real question is, how good should they be at doing this? I think it's easy enough to describe the desired result, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's not so easy to quantify. Ideally, you want your units to do an okay job of selecting targets, but not as good a job as a competent player would do. It would be very bad, for instance, to have the AI automatically target nearby units with HP missing. That sort of AI improvement would essentially render Micro obsolete. As it stands though, I think you could, and actually I would argue, that the unit AI in DE is a bit too stupid, especially for melee units, so this sort of problem is likely a ways off in the future. One of my biggest gripes with DE right now is how melee units often ignore your orders when you right-click to kill a specific unit and revert to an attack move command for some reason. Killing siege units with cavalry can be pretty frustrating right now. Sometimes you just have to spam right-click until they're dead. But that aside, in theory, as a general rule, units should not definitely continue doing what you told them to in a somewhat blunt, not completely efficient way, such that the game isn't overly cumbersome to play for a low-skilled player who uses one hand, while still giving skilled players ample opportunity to impose their will on their opponents. The AI deciding to gather a resource you didn't tell it to, or making a unit you didn't explicitly decide to make, would both constitute crossing the line. And to make it clear, yes, the Age of Mythology auto queue crosses the line for me. Even as a kid I hated it and went back to playing the vanilla version of the game, as I recall many others at the time doing for the same reason. Anyway, there are two quality of life improvements in AoE 2 DE that flirt with this line, and I'm only okay with them due to the incompetence of their algorithms. I am, of course, referring to the farm auto reseed button and the new auto scout feature. As they are right now, I'm not only fine with them, I actually think they're good for the game. That is, if they remain as they are now indefinitely. They make it more approachable to new players without affecting higher level players much. But the reason they don't affect higher level players that much is that they don't work that well. If the algorithms for these features were to approach perfection, it would be a different story. To be fair, the farm auto reseed button wouldn't necessarily be game breaking if it worked perfectly, but I like it quite a bit as it is right now. That is to say, as a blunt instrument. Your farmers will often steal each other's farms over time and go idle a little bit more than you'd like. It's still more efficient than manually rebuilding farms if you can stomach the fact that 60 wood periodically disappears from your stockpile, but it's technically better not to use it until you're in the late game if you're a higher skilled high APM player. 
This is exactly how I think it should work, and I hope they never optimize it further. It helps new players considerably, but for more skilled players, it actually comes with disadvantages too, which it should. I think this feature as it stands right now is a good example of straddling the fuzzy line of quality of life improvements fairly well. I feel similarly about Auto Scout as it works right now, but that's only because it isn't very good at scouting. It keeps moving, but it doesn't always go in the most efficient direction, it isn't great at making sure you find all your resources before scouting your opponent, and it also has a tendency to get itself killed by town centers. But if it was good at scouting effectively and not getting killed, I would be very much against this feature. If it perfectly understood the probabilities of certain resources spawning in certain locations based on what you can see of the map so far, and always moved in the mathematically optimal direction without stopping, it would be awful for the game. It would almost beg the question why even bother playing with an unexplored map if you no longer have the potential to explore it more efficiently than your opponent and decide how best to play on it. So I guess I would say that I'm more wary of RTS AI improving in such a way that it makes decisions for you than I am in increasing your ability to do things via clicking and issuing orders in the interface itself. Both of the aforementioned DE changes do flirt with this line, but they don't bother me at all because they just aren't that effective. What really does worry me about the potential long-term future of RTS, if it will even have one beyond legacy games, is the possibility that these types of AI algorithms will inch their way forward, improving slowly enough that there's no clear moment when we decide to say that they've gone too far. I would liken it to the way that social media platforms have slowly chipped away at our attitudes toward personal privacy and in tiny installments that didn't seem that individually significant, but the sum of which we would never have agreed to have presented to us up front. I think we should definitely be wary of RTS AI and interface improvements that make important strategic decisions for us, even small ones. As I said, it's difficult to pinpoint where exactly this fuzzy line is, but we ought to try. Perhaps this analogy is uncomfortably topical right now, but part of me can't help but liken the Auto Scout feature to a synthetic experimental virus in a petri dish in a black ops lab somewhere. It's not dangerous right now, and for all we know, experimenting with it could contribute to crucial medical breakthroughs but we certainly wouldn't want someone to dump it into the water supply, and it might make us uncomfortable to think that scientists were experimenting with ways of making it immune to antivirals. Tinfoil hat off, this is obviously an exaggeration. I think it's important to remember that you can only use the auto scout feature on your starting scout unit, and the fact that this was a conscious decision implies to me that the DE team is actually thinking about issues like this, which I find highly reassuring. Even in its current inefficient state, there are plenty of ways I could imagine using auto scout later on in the game if you could use it on any unit. For instance, you know that handful of spearmen you sometimes make in the feudal age on open land maps to not die to scouts? I often find myself thinking that I would certainly hit the auto scout button on one or two of them after the danger had passed if I had the option. This is the sort of slippery slope first baby step that could lead in a bad direction long term, and I think it's great to see that the DE team really does seem to want to contain the virus to the lab's quarantine zone so to speak. I can't help but feel grateful that DE is in pretty good hands, since it's most likely the game I'm going to continue to play long term. It's clearly not perfect by any stretch, but it is good, and the developers have the right attitude, so the future looks pretty bright. Anyway, that's just about all for this video. There's certainly more I could say about RTS AI, but in the interest of maintaining an at least somewhat coherent through line to this video, I'm gonna stop here. As always, thanks for watching, and remember to rate, subscribe, hit the bell, and all that. See you soon.